Okay, here we are, uh, Brendan and Dan, we've been doing videos on legal stuff. Uh, lately, we've been talking about the, the possibility of um, liability for, for the recklessness of uh, Donald Trump uh, holding a rally in the middle of a pandemic. And it got Dan and I to thinking, uh, since a really good friend of mine is an actual scientist, that we should do a video with him. And his name is Justin Meyer, head of the Meyer Lab at Cal San Diego. Uh, and Justin, you teach uh, biology and infectious diseases. Um, I, w I don't want to characterize your work because I'll get it wrong. <laughs> uh, thanks for thanks for joining us. Uh, if you want to talk for a minute to introduce yourself, that'd be great. Sounds good. Yeah. So I am a, a professor at UC San Diego. Uh, I run a lab where we research the evolution of viruses. And um, the primary course I teach is called the Evolution of Infectious Diseases. I just taught it last term, and uh, I adapted the course so that we went over lots of topics related to COVID-19. And the topics that were not directly related to COVID-19, I would discuss um, how they related to the ongoing pandemic. Uh, so all of those videos are on YouTube right now. Uh, they are hosted through UCSD TV. Um, yeah, so in general, I'm just interested in how viruses evolve. <coughs> Our lab goes over subjects of how viruses get the necessary mutations that allow them to transition to new host species. So uh, the subjects that I'm interested in are relevant for understanding how COVID-19, how SARS-CoV-2, that's the strain that causes COVID-19, um, how SARS-CoV-2 jumped into human populations, and now how is that virus evolving and adapting uh, to better exploit us, which is a kind of kind of scary idea that it could do that, but it can. I thought so, it might yeah. be a, a good, Justin, to start by having you explain for us how it is that viruses do their thing. As, as I understand it, and again, completely lay person understanding. A virus is really nothing more than a packet of genes that is programmed, if you will, to hijack the cells of other living organisms and to get those cells to do the heavy lifting of reproducing. The virus can't do that on its own. It needs to infect a host in order to make that happen. Can you explain to us, for starters, then how it is that a virus is, what is a virus and how does it do its basic business, if you will? Yeah, so I mean, I think I think your description is, is right on. Um, at the sort of largest conceptual level, a virus is uh, a package of genetic code that is able to get that genetic code into a cell, a host cell, and is then able with just a few proteins and its DNA or its RNA, those are two different types of genetic codes. Um, uh, SARS-CoV-2 is an RNA-based virus, um, but it can get its, its code into the cell and trick the cell into reproducing more of that genetic code reproducing uh, proteins that are associated with the virus. So with the virus replication, but also with the structure of the virus. Um, and it has all of the information for the cell to, uh, to completely be co-opted. Um, you know, you can think of these kind of as zombie cells. They, they normally, you know, do their normal function, keep the organism that they're in healthy and alive and reproducing. And all of that gets rewired so that now the cell is just a factory for that, that virus. Um, and so the, the virus is able to coerce the cell um, and then reproduce new viral particles, have the genetic information packed in those vir virus particles. And then the last step of infection is for those particles to actually leave the cell, uh, spread through the environment and, and, and encounter another cell and start that process over again. Um, so one one of the ways that I've described viruses in, in some of my papers is that they're, they're they they kind of hack the cell. Um, they are these molecular hackers that say, oh, you know, you you have a computer that a virus would take over and send uh, a computer virus would take over and send out more um, computer viruses to other computers. Uh, it's the exact same concept where you know you have you have a computer code, a bunch of zeros and ones that 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 uh, that virus code that a hacker created 
um, distorts those zeros and ones and that that computer code into now doing something different, not doing you know word processing anymore, but instead sending out other other uh, malicious uh, computer programs. Um, and so that's that's exactly the same concept that you know deep down in all of our cells is a genetic code. So it's not zeros and ones like a computer. It's it's A T G's and C's if your DNA. It's A U G and C if you're an RNA based virus. Um, so the exact details of how viruses replicate and cause the infection cycle varies a lot by virus. Um, there is an enormous amount of diversity of viruses on Earth. One fact that is always bewildering to me is that there's actually more viruses on Earth than any other living organism. I think there's something about 10 to the 35 of viral particles on Earth. This is astronomical. And so they have the most genetic diversity out of any other organism. And what that translates to is a, a, an incredible number of ways of causing infections, causing disease, and replicating and spreading. Um, but at, at, the, at the core of all of that is this idea that they have genetic information that takes over a cell, creates more viruses, and then they move on to the next cell. Okay, um, so, so with that sort of foundational understanding of how viruses <clears throat> do their thing, you mentioned something uh, when you were introducing yourself that got my attention, and I think that's probably a good place to jump off and start talking more specifically about the evolution of this virus. You, you said one of the things you've, you've looked into is how the virus sort of jumped from wherever it began, and, and maybe you can talk about that too, to the extent that's within your roundhouse, how it jumped from there into humans. So if you would, start with that. Yeah, so um, we, so this is the, one of the first times where we have a pandemic where we have a lot of uh, sequencing, so DNA and RNA sequencing capacity in place, and we're actually able to, um, you know, sequence the whole genome of the virus very rapidly. And we've had the whole genome of that virus, and we've had genomes of other viruses that are very similar to it. And so we actually have a lot more precision now to uh, reconstruct exactly what happened and how this virus um, uh, jumped from one host species to another host species. What are the genetic characteristics that might have enabled it to, to do that? And I think we'll talk later about, we also have all, all of this real-time data on how the virus is changing as it spreads around the, the world. Um, and so that's all enabled by new sequencing technology. And so getting to the question of, you know, what about these genetic sequences seem to suggest that, or what mutations in these genetic sequences um, allowed it to jump from bats to humans. So, um, there's a lot of controversy about how this transition happened. Uh, there are a lot of conspiracy theories about it arising in the lab. And I can say that um, when you look at these genetic sequences, and I have, um, they, they're interesting. There's some uh, abnor abnormalities about them. They're not, they're not typical, and you wouldn't expect them to be typical because, you know, this is obviously not a typical virus that could, you know, cause a pandemic like it has. Um, however, they're not engineered. They are very natural and they look like there's patterns in the DNA, uh, in, I'm sorry, in, in the RNA that um, are very similar to what we see in other viruses and what I see in viruses that I study as well. Um, and so some of these interesting characteristics are um, related to this, this uh, gene called S or it's for the spike protein. So the coronavirus um, has all of these proteins on the on its on on its outer membrane. If you one image that people can uh, often see in the news is this uh, viral particle with these big red uh, bulbous proteins um, yes. off, the, off the outside of it. Those bulbous proteins are the spike protein. Um, that's why it's called coronavirus is because it looks like a crown because of these proteins. Um, those proteins are really critical for two things that we'll talk about today. So one is uh, it getting into the cell, it connecting to a cell, recognizing a cell, and getting into that cell. Uh, the other thing is that our, our immune systems uh, detect that protein, and that's usually what 
the immune system learns what that protein's like and how to get rid of that protein. So, but getting back to how it made this transition into humans, uh, it seems that a lot of the evolutionary action that led to its emergence into humans uh, happened in that spike protein. Uh, that makes sense. The, it started out in bats um, and it transitioned into humans. Bats have different uh, cells than we have. And so the, the virus is, has to uh, evolve, basically learn how to recognize a human cell uh, and get into that cell, trigger an infection. Right now, it's programmed to get into a bat cell. Um, and so there are likely genetic changes that open that doorway into the human cell. Um, and so some of those genetic changes in the S appear to be these large scale, um, they're called insertions and deletions. That's where you get a, a brand new piece of genetic information just plopping in by random mutation into a, into a, a, a gene or deletions where a big segment of it leaves. Those things are usually really deleterious to um, proteins uh, and so they typically don't last. That, that When you get that mutation, you die. But these, these viruses actually have it, suggesting that um, something about that radical change allowed them to uh, survive and actually do something new, maybe infect uh, human cells. The other interesting thing that happens in this spike protein is what we call recombination. And that is where you can get genetic pieces uh, from one strain of virus mixing with another strain of virus. And these are radical changes to, um, uh, to RNA sequences, the genes of the virus, and they can also facilitate, you know, just really new kinds of functions in the, in the spike protein. And so it appears that this virus, while it's a bat virus, it recombined at some point with a pangolin uh, virus. So a pangolin is this really strange animal. It looks, it's a mammal, but it looks like it has scales all over it. It's kind of like an anteater. Um, yeah. so it certainly at some point recombined with that pangolin in a really exception <laughs> of its spike protein um, where the spike protein actually interacts directly with its host cells. And so it, it appears that those changes there, plus maybe these insertions and deletions, these are all really rare kinds of evolutionary events, um, but they came together and it appears that they uh, you know, created a, a uh, coronavirus that could rapidly spread in humans and, you know, and, and cause a pandemic. So all of these, um, in, my, in the virus that I study, we see lots of recombination and we see lots of um, insertion de and deletions uh, in, the, in the host recognition protein. That's what the spike protein is called, a host recognition protein. Um, and so it, it appears like it's very normal. Um, but in terms of evolving, these are really rare and it's unfortunate that these kinds of mutations and genetic changes all came together in the same protein. So the, the, these observations are just based on sequencing uh, SARS-CoV-2 and then sequencing SARS, the original SARS and MERS. Uh, these are all related viruses and sequencing other uh, coronaviruses and seeing what's distinct about all of these different strains. Uh, that's, a, that's a correlative um, uh, exercise, whereas hopefully in the future, now that we have these um, variations among the viruses identified, people will do lab experiments to pinpoint what about w which one of these mutations, which one of these insertions and deletions, or which one of these recombinations is what really mattered uh, to, to allow the virus to spread into humans.